The trouble with old steam locomotives part 16, dismantling the valve gear to remove the broken parts. In order to do this I have to tip the locomotive on its side as you can see here. Now I can get to the bolts on the inside of the frames. I'm going to use a socket on the bolt head and a small spanner underneath on the nuts. This is the first of two broken parts I need to remove from the engine, repair and refit. For the small 2BA nuts underneath, I thought at first I would try this spanner, it's a very specialist Barco spanner. But unfortunately the axle box horns were in the way, so I ended up using a very small spanner. This is incredibly fiddly. This clip shows me removing the lower nuts on the left hand side of the frames. This clip shows me using a box key on the bolts on the right hand side of the frames. Why did I do this? Well it's quite difficult to video up underneath the axle and I'm sure you get the general picture of what I'm doing. These nuts and bolts were very tight. This is the final part when I'm spinning off the bolt from the nut which is loose underneath. And here it comes. A quite long 2BA bolt which is now firmly stuck in the box key. The next part of the operation is to disconnect all the linkages. First of all the main one on the shaft that appears to be broken and if you look carefully this nut is cracked. I'll show you when I finally get my fingers in there. In this part of the clip you can clearly see that the nut is split. The next part is to remove the link from the return crank. At first I thought this was a spacer but no it's part of the bearing. One more nut to remove and then this part is isolated and I can take it off the locomotive. Here I'm lifting off the valve gear linkages and I'm going to move them out of the way so you can see the part that I need to work on clearly. And there it is. This is a bell crank, it's a 90 degree bell crank. And the top part of this that unfortunately goes into the cab is connected via linkages to the reversing lever. And as I move the reversing lever in the cab, as you can see, this part goes back and forth and the other end of it, which is at 90 degrees, goes up and down. This is a simplified version of the valve gear that's shown on the drawing. This engine is called a meter maid and it's a six wheeled version of the 040 or 042 sweet pea. And the valve gear on a sweet pea is quite different to this. Sweet pea valve gear has a die block that slides up and down a slot that can be rotated. But this, to be fair, is a very simple solution. And it's much easier to make than the usual sweet pea reversing mechanism. It obviously works, you've seen the engine running, albeit badly because there's too much play in these links. I thought this was going to be a really simple job. Remove the bracket so I can repair the pin and then just lift the top part off the bracket pin. But no, it's impossible to do that because the actual bracket has a piece of tube brace to it which in turn goes over the broken pin and to get this part off the engine, the cab's got to go. The cab is held to the running boards at the side using two bolts and to successfully get at the nuts underneath, I'm having to use an extension on the socket. Using the socket extension allows my hand to not be in the video. I'm using a torch because it's very dark under there. This series is called The Trouble with Old Steam Locomotives for a Good Reason. By the time a miniature steam locomotive or a full-size steam locomotive gets old, two things happen. Some of the parts go very rusty and are therefore difficult to remove, and they are very dirty, oily things to work on. A while back when I did one day a week at the steam workshop, I was given a small 040 locomotive to work on called a chub. We had to put it in the steam cleaner before I was even allowed to touch it because it was covered in rat hairs, rat droppings and obviously that could have posed a risk to my health. I removed the two nuts and bolts from each side of the cab, now it's time to take these off. These bolts are captive to the tank and are probably made of brass. So a bit of WD-40 first and a very gentle touch removed the nuts without event. I didn't show the removal of the nut on the other side, take my word for it, there was one there too. Now it's time to wrestle with the cab to get it off the locomotive. I disconnected the whistle valve from the turret, that was an obvious thing to do, but I forgot about the pressure gauge, here I'm bending it out of the way. Finally the cab comes off the locomotive, and in this clip I'm using my Henry vacuum cleaner to vacuum up all the debris that's left where the cab was, mainly bits of coal and general dirt. 
Often I receive requests from customers that go something like this. I have this old locomotive, it works perfectly, but it needs a repaint. Can you give me a quote for repainting it, please? And the first thing I say is, well, it's going to be expensive. Why is that? Because the job takes a very long time to complete, and a lot of the locomotive has to be dismantled. Other jobs that I often turn away are ones when the email or telephone conversations start with, I have an unfinished steam locomotive, but it's 99% complete. And when this is the case, I request some digital photographs. And when the photographs arrive, often the 99% complete is a bit of a joke, really. And the cost of finishing the locomotive is much more than it's actually worth. And my hourly rate is not excessive. The quote that I gave to and was accepted by the customer for this job is accurate. Here I'm removing the last link bolt and after this I'm able to take the part away from the engine and look at what needs doing to it. The part that I'm removing from the engine is duplicated at the other side and provided that the repair to this side is successful I will repeat the process on the one on the other side. Take a look at this image and imagine how much you would have to quote to repaint this locomotive. This is a very small part of the engine and you cannot paint over all this grime. With the defective parts removed, I can now have a close look at them. Here's the bell crank with its bracket. And here you can clearly see the construction. When I remove the bell crank from the bracket, you can also clearly see the problem. This part's been repaired before. Very badly. It's been welded underneath and it's also been silver soldered or brazed, and both jobs are not good ones. I'm checking what the metal is that the pin's made from, it's certainly not hardened. I couldn't scratch it with a ruler if it was hardened metal. Now I have to look at a repair that will be a proper repair. First of all, I'm measuring the part. One option is to remake the bracket machine from the solid. More about that in the next episode, for the moment though, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.